Sure. Who also, if you if you know, if you if you go out um, uh, and join the protest on any given day, the public theater lobby, I believe, is not correct. Audrey is open in support two to six. Yep, from two to six in support of the uh, the justice justice our justice warriors, and uh, we also want to give thanks to Hal Round who help us and have been helping us for the past three years. The uh, public theater has been helping us for 11 years doing this show, which is amazing. And um, so we're really grateful today. And do we know what we're doing here? Of course we know what we're doing. We're here, we're gonna do Watch Me Work. Um, we work together on any kind of work you got, anything. And um, then we talk about your creative process, your work and your creative process. And um, if you want to have a question after our 20 minute work session, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Go Audrey. SLP. Yeah. So if you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button, which is in the participant tab, which is likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top of your screen on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can actually tweet a question at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And you can also tweet at Public Theater NY or write into our Instagram messages uh, and we'll get it there. Okay. And I got to say, I love, uh, I, mean, I love seeing people in the lobby of the public theater, but I especially love this version of Watch Me Work because it has a mute function uh, so that when I'm working, I can be noisy, which I like to be. Anyway, so maybe some of y'all like to be noisy too. We got 20 minutes. Here we go.
right. Yes, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so um, this is the part where we take questions from you. Yeah. Here we go. We've got a question. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> All right, Erica, you are up first. Did you get the request to unmute? There you go. Can you hear me? Hey. 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 Hi. So thank you so much, like everyone says, but this has just been such a godsend for me. Um, just having an appointment every day. It's amazing. Um, my question, I guess, is kind of related to the fact that this thing is already helping me, but it's about shifting gears. Like, I feel like it takes me so long to get into my work. Um, I'm working, I've, I do like advertising, copywriting and like other kinds of PR, pro- like I have all these projects and I'm lucky enough to have some jobs at home. So I'm trying not to complain, but at the same time, then I, I become resentful because I've gotten inside my novel that I've been working on forever and I want to be in there. And then I feel like I'm being dragged out all the time and then it takes me forever to get back. You know, and so even like this 20 minutes has been great because I realized there's actually a lot you can do in 20 minutes, but sometimes it feels like the time just like goes away. <laughs> and um, so that, I guess, are there any tricks to getting inside it quick, I guess? Um, you know, I know there are other people I've heard are working on like five things. And so that's really impressive. I just, even a couple of things, I, I feel like my brain for shifting gears has gotten slower. That's a great question, Erica. And, you know, those of us who are working on multiple projects, it's still, it's still a, a shifting question. How do we shift from one thing to another? Even if, it's, even if you're only working on, say, one project and your main job is to help your, guide your kid through their third grade math homework. I mean, exactly. you don't need to, you know, it's all important and it all needs to get done. Um, Sometimes, I mean, that's why keep, you said appointments work for you. And maybe if you're, you know, you're doing advertising copy uh, and you're in an office you know that's the time for that and then you're here and it's okay but say that right these days maybe you don't go to the office um you could have and I don't know what size your living space is but you can have maybe different places to do the work a lot of times in the morning I trick my I trick my I have a lot of little tricks um I trick myself into doing things like if I'm needing I get up and I meditate so there's my meditation cushion it's like right there right and then I like have I have to I schedule my yoga practice which also happens in my living room we have a very very tiny apartment right so I my family will attest to this I walk over to my yoga mat and kind of stand there and I won't move until I unroll it and then I stand at the front of it and I have to do yoga, you know what I mean? So all these little tricks, you can sit yourself down. Um, timers are good because you can say, I'll only do 20 minutes and then I'll get up and do some necessary task around the house or whatever, and then do another 20 minutes and that 20 minutes can accumulate over the day. You can do you know, three 20 minute segments equals an hour. That's a good chunk of time, you know what I mean? Um, you can, I don't know, don't know what time, you know, if you have family or what time they get up in the morning or all that kind of stuff, but early in the morning sometimes helps if you're a night owl late at night, 20 minute segments is really cool, right? You can also do, where are they? I got all these things around my desk. You can't see them, but they are, you know, ah, oh, here they are, you know, man, these are magic. They're not quaaludes or whatever. They're earplugs, you know, Right. Um, I have a very noisy Washington Square Park is right out there. People, you know, peacefully protesting. I put in my earplugs if I need to get my work done at certain times of the day when it's especially noisy. Um, That helps me also focus in. The timer, though, is the best thing. Yeah, I'm going to get an actual one like that. Yes, this. Yeah, no, your phone. Where's my phone? This is a crack delivery system. You wouldn't know it. Right, but it really is. It's a crack delivery system. Um, your phone is crack and it's got so many wonderful things on it. Right? Uh, this only has one wonderful thing on it. This is just, right? 
I have many of these. I can try. I have so, I have so many timers. It's kind of sad. I have so many of them because I, I like to use them so much. All right, that's awesome. I, I feel like that's really helpful. And like I said, this has been the first, you know, the first step and really great. And this has been a couple of months now, so. Great. Good, good, good. Going. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you, Erica. Great question. Thanks, Erica. Um, all right. Up next, we have got Richard. Richard, are you there? Oh, hold on. I got to click one more time. Are you there? I'm here. Hi. Yay. Hi, Richard. So um, thank you. Thank the community for the last two months, three months. So the, when we left off, I had these two guys in a park. I was right a block and leaving it for a few days. And then I put these guys in a car and we took a road trip and it unleashed this flow, this great, this ease. When I'm rereading it now, it feels like act one or part one is the only connection between part one and part two is because I say it so. It, it feels like very disconnected and it, it feels like a lot of times when I see plays, I only believe that act one and act two exists as a play because they say so. So the, the question is, how do you deal with a transition? Um, question mark. It's so, different. They're in a car in the second part. In the first part, they're in a park. Mm -hmm. And it, it totally affects how they talk to each other, mm -hmm. how they receive each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there so this is just silly, but uh, like if everything. You sit, yeah, if you sit in a car, if you sit in the park, right? Where is their car parked? Sorry, Dad. Okay. Where is? Can you see it? I mean, if you're sitting with them, is it like across town? It's maybe at a house a block, a half a block down. Can they see it? Uh-huh. What color is the car, by the way? Exactly. Blue. Like sky blue. Sky gray. Teal. Like the color of J. Julian Christopher's background. Does it have a name? Does the car have a name? Does the car have a name? <gasps> yes. Yeah. You know, it's I'm just I'm just curious. Is there a way to, as they say in you know, professional writing circles. It's a way to tee up the trip, the road trip. Meaning, you know, tee up, like it's a golf metaphor, I know, and I don't play golf, but I, my sister does. But, you know, is it a way to set up the, 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 the action of the, the driving that happens in act two? Oh. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Is there a way to set it up? Do, does one of the characters fondly talk about her driving experience he had with his niece or nephew when he took them 80 miles to go to the zoo where there was the only living sloth in the state. You know, I mean, you know, I'm just making that shit up, but you know what I'm saying? And then we transitioned into, oh, there they are in a road trip. Do you see what I'm saying? Is there a way to set it up? Exactly. So that it's connected to the desire of the characters. Because actually, the first part is all about getting out. In the second part, they get out. But there you go. You get out in where? How do you get out? What is it you get out? Because it's not a car, it's my car. It's the color is sky blue. Right. I think the sound connected to me. Just, just, just lay it in there. It's a, you know, lay it in the the fabric of the first act a little bit more. And good for you for getting through. You know, it sounds like you got through act two. It sounds like it's beautiful. It sounds very beautiful. We'll share it sometime. Okay. 
We'll Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Um, all right, Kendall, you are up next. Are you there, Kendall? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, first, obviously, thank you for this, but also I want to thank you because yesterday uh, someone asked you a question and you just recommended going to the park and eating ice cream. So I use that as justification for eating two slices of carrot cake. And I just told myself it's fine because Susan Laurie Parks told me to. So thank you for that. Second, um, so my friend and I are collaborating on a web series together and it's really easy to do because she's in Canada and I'm in New York right now. And um, I was just, this is the first time that she and I each have collaborated on writing. I was wondering, do you have any, any advice or maybe something like, you know, something you've learned that you can pass on to a young artist who's collaborating for the first time <laughs> <laughs> you, you write writing with others right Writing yeah. writing with others writing with others can be a lot of fun because you know it's it's like you if you get like tired or out of ideas or you're cranky one day then maybe they'll be able to come on let's go let's do, you know let's show up anyway let's just throw anything down on the paper um and if your friend one day if they're tired or cranky or not in the mood you can encourage them right Gotcha. Yeah. Really super great. So lean on your friend, mm. you know, lean on each other, carry mm -hmm. the weight, mm -hmm. you know, be ready to carry the weight. Um, I'm guessing that you have some kind of a, hate to say it, prenup, <laughs> kind of, do you have a little contracty something like we're writing this together, it's our, you know, do you have some kind of, some kind of prenup thing going on? Like in writing, like it's just something that she and I are like working on right now. I think to like not go crazy. Yeah. Hopefully do you, do you, in the future, this is something we can like do. Sure. Do either you have a representation, like an agent or anything? I don't have one for writing. No. No. Okay. okay. Well, I'm, I'm just. Well, then you might want to just DIY prenup. Okay. You know, Paul McCartney. You ever heard of him? You know, he no, got married to a woman named Heather. I forgot her last name. Okay. She, uh, they didn't have a prenup, you know, then oh, they I got divorced. Like, two, yeah, you heard about that. Yeah, you know, Paul, you just want to be poor Paul. Right? I mean, he's rich. He can afford to lose it, but. Yeah, but she got a, she got a new pair of right? shoes. She got a new pair of shoes, right. So, I mean, you guys are friends. It'll make it easier. Yeah. Because you are friends. And mm -hmm. when you sell your brilliant piece of writing to you name it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then you'll be like, you don't even have to think about that. Like we're writing this, we're sharing it 50, 50. Gotcha. And that's, you know, that's, we both sign it. Hurrah. That's all you got to do. Okay. Like that. Gotcha. Um, lean on each other so that when you're, you got your prenup, now you don't mind going two days in a row. You had all the ideas, Kendall. Then the next day for two days, your friend had all the ideas. You won't be thinking, Oh gee, you know, or if some pr producer reads it. Wow. This is great. Okay. Who's going to do the rewrite? Well, we both are. We both did it together. Mm. You know, it, 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 hopefully it won't lessen the romantic element of it, the joyous nature of it. Sure. Um, yeah. And, okay. and maybe before, after the end of every session, you guys can go, okay, so maybe you, you, you game plan, you strategize about the things you're going to work on in oh. your team state okay. and come to the table with the next day. Sorry, there's music now. Now there's somebody he only plays three chords this guy but they oh, work I... <laughs> same three chords every day this dude <laughs> Eight or four chords or whatever um, but he has a song in his heart and we love him That's does, that, does that make sense so maybe you can go okay so what are we gonna you know so hey tomorrow you know think about character a and i'm gonna think about character r and we're gonna think about that great okay like that you guys can you know it's 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 you're doubling your your power you know okay gotcha have awesome. fun though and oh, yeah don't yeah keep from going crazy and yes thank you so much thank you thanks kendall um all right up next we've got lynn are you there lynn yes i am I, am i unmuted yeah hey. first of all thank you thank you thank you and thank good you. to see you lynn it's so good to see you so um some time ago when I, I think when you told me to put something in a drawer and, you know, I put it in a drawer and I, I really, because of life and because of other things, I mean, I, I was um, 
writing other stuff just to keep writing in, you know, little 10 minute plays and this and that. But I took out the thing I put in the drawer, which means so much to me. And so much time has passed. I'm a different person. My life is different. And I still want to write this. And, you know, what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, does that mm -hmm. add to it? Because uh, my, my perception of what I wanted to say has changed. So right, my, right. My characters are the same, though. But my perception of some of them is changed. I. Right. So you're, you're, have you, did you get to the end before you put it in the drawer, Lynn? No. No. I knew what the end was, but. I okay. Did. Okay. Okay. And do you still remember what that end you had in mind was? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, you know, I mean, your choices are this either say, I'm a different person, oh well, and put it down and go, oh well, or I'm a different person, or I'm the same person, but just, you know, smarter, wiser, a better writer. I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at this with, with fr relatively fresh eyes and do a rewrite on it. You know, I mean, because it's not like you want to write, it's like you want to rewrite it. You're in the rewrite stage, let's yeah. just say. And you want to go through it and you want to do a rewrite on it with fresh eyes. Can you rewrite something that isn't finished on the page, but is it, but you know what it is? Well, I would say in this case, yeah. If you, if you can say, what you do is you take a piece of paper, um, eight and a half by 11, not this. It has music on it, but anyway, eight and a half. You write, either write or type it out what the end is. Okay. So this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, and in the end, this happens, the end. Okay, okay so now you've finished the draft, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Now you go back and you do your rewrite. You see what I'm saying? So you're not going to try to finish the end, get to the end in the mode that you were in X number of years ago when you put it in the drawer, because that's not possible. Right. You do what's possible. You, you, this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, in the end, that happened, the end. Great. Now I stick that on, that's the last page. You go to the front and you rewrite with this new, fresh, awesome superpower that you've generated in the past couple of months. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And, and just one other quick question. Uh, uh, I was so uh, moved by Carol uh, the other day when you spoke to her. And I love you for your empathy, and I feel the same way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. I know. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks, sweetheart. Thank you. All right. Oh, uh, up next we've got Julia. Julia. Um. Hi. Um. Wow. Um. Hi, and I'm. Thank you so much for this. I'm. I'm uh, new. Um, I've been an actor for a long time and specializing in like new plays, um, but I just started writing writing in the last two years, and I got a commission to to write a kind of either a one character play or a one person show, and it's about um, disappearance in its many forms of things like a grifter or a death or a, um, anyway um, the person that I was working with as a director and dramaturg um, disappeared and um, I'm working with somebody else now and I'm going through like all the stuff that I've written and a little bit of it is uh, I have a little bit of the same question as just previously that I feel like some of my ideas have and priorities have shifted but I also was just looking through all these work notes that I had from the first person that I was working with and wondering how valid it is to bring those in now that I'm working with someone else do you have a thought on that 
it also goes back to our first question, you know, did you have, or from Kindle, you know, did you have some kind of agreement with that person or? No, no. I mean, no, a, there's no, there's no legal thing about it. Thing. I just, I guess I feel, I feel a little lost in the project now. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I would say use what you got. If it's old work notes, mm -hmm. you know, and they're interesting to you and they're valid to you and they make sense to you and they spark you, I would say use them. I would say also if they don't, don't feel obligated to use them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, try, try as much as you can, like with Lynn, you know, I said, to, to get to a kind of end, because what you, I don't, what I, it's tricky to, okay, I'm a new person, I'm picking this up again, I'm gonna start at the beginning, you know? See if you can get to some kind of end with it, some kind of way. Get to a kind of finish line. I find that very helpful because then you can, you can, you know, pat yourself on the back. I got to a finish line. Now I can look at the whole thing again. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so we don't get stuck in the, I got to get the first 10 pages right. You know, um, that's what I, that's what I would do. Okay. I would just try to somehow get to the finish line. Okay. Um, you know, um, use the notes, the old notes, if they help. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and thank you. I, I can't, this is so inspiring to me. And everybody is, everybody's so wise. I mean, everybody's questions are so wise. It's really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Julia. Um, all right. So we actually have a question from social media. Um, it's this, the political and social sphere of Black Lives Matter has informed, informed my current writing. Do you ever feel burnout or pressure from writing on racism? How do you write about these things without it weighing you down? And this is a question from Twitter. I'm not sure who from Twitter. Right. Um, well, well, um, you know, I, I'm, I don't, writing about racism, you know, I've been, I've, I've heard people say, you know, they've just discovered like who they, they discovered who they are by writing. You know, I discovered who I am by just being, you know, when I was born, you know what I'm saying? Um, so the burden, if it, you call it that, or the responsibility of being an African-American woman living in America, I've been carrying for my whole life. And it requires a special kind of grace to carry the burden, the burden of, you know, the, or the responsibility, if you say, the responsibility of, of being a, a, of a race that isn't often respected and being of a gender that isn't as respected as it should be either, you know? So there you go. That's the, that's the ticket. And No, it does, it's, it's odd though, it, it's, it's not a burnout thing. What you have to constantly do is remember, what I remember anyway, this is what I do, I always remember that whatever I'm writing about, I'm always writing about people. I would not say I write about race. I would not say I write about gender issues, racial issues, homelessness issues, uh, you know, issues, any issue. I don't write about issues, I write about people. And writing about people and their desires is a source of constant, you know, joy and often anguish because my people are a lot of time in anguish. But I, I so I would suggest that in, for this Twitter person that instead of focusing on the issue, focus on the person. Right. OK, so we don't write about the issue. We write about the person because at the end of the day, that's who we're. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about people. Um, and I found that very helpful in my many years of being a writer. Many, many, many years. <laughs> okay, I hope that's helpful. I wish we could see you and talk to you here, but hopefully that'll be helpful. Yeah, come on by sometime. Um, all right, thank you, SLP. Um, we've got about 11 minutes left and we've got, Devin has got a question. Go for thank it, you. Devin. Greetings from Los Angeles. Um, it's been uh, such an intense time, as everyone knows. 
Uh, in the last week, I've had I, two of my sons have been in um, skirmishes with the police, and um, uh, you know, uh, it's been very um, serious situation um, in my family and all around. Um, and uh, you know, as a playwright, I'm on the I've written a play. I started it, this play twenty years ago. Um, it's based on um, some source material, which is white. I'm white. I'm white female. Um, and I'm about to cast this for a certain, you know, reading. And I'm really troubled by the fact that it's entirely white. It really troubles me. Now, I can, um, it, it, like I said, it, there's source material that is white. Um, it's based on paintings that are of white folk. Um, <laughs> So I, um, I've been giving this a lot of thought and I, um, I, I have always loved colorblind casting, you know, like the best actor for the role to me um, is, the, is the best choice. Um, but in this particular moment, I'm, I'm, it's, I just feel like I have a, I'm just wondering if you would talk to me about that. That's, it's, it's tricky. Um, first of all, I hope your sons are okay. They are. Did we you. talk about parenting a, a last week or something? Did we not, Devin? Did we talk about your kids who are old enough to go out? Anyway, maybe not. Um, but I'm, I hope, I'm glad your sons are okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, were, they, were they out protesting or were they? Yeah, they were. Being... Uh, my older son was arrested in the Bronx uh, on the 5th of uh, June. And my younger son was in a, um, uh, was in a skirmish in uh, Pittsburgh where he's at school. Um, and his, mm -hmm. his partner was hit with tear gas. So he's been taking care of them. Yeah. Right, right. But I'm, um, and they're, they're, pretty much okay no. well they're traumatized and they uh sure. you know they've you know i i just i you know it's just an evolution i think of consciousness you know to get get woke to this and you know i, I grew up in a white county and a in a and and had a particular feeling about the police and then um you know but my sons have always been like uh-uh that's not who the police are so mm -hmm. it, it, i am grateful for this moment um this moment in so many ways. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so oh, because you know, and they're, they're good. No, yeah. I'm I'm glad. And so you have your play, your your beautiful play that is about white folks. Let's just say, you know, right? It's a, it, or it, it has you know white folks in it. It's about white folks in paintings I'm just right I mean tell me if I'm I yeah I'm, no that's exactly right and yeah. you know there there are a dozen characters and they play. Mm -hmm actors play paintings and then they play people in a tour. So um, that's, mm -hmm. that's the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so, right, so I mean, you could cast it like you were, have always, I'm guessing, been intending to cast it and that's what it is. Um, the good thing about a play is that you can do it many different ways you know it's not like a film script where you shoot it and that's kind of what it is right yeah you can cast it in many different ways um i'm guessing i'm guessing you're going to do it on a zoom kind of thing right okay yeah. so why don't you, you know the tricky thing about doing the right thing is that you want it to well, sometimes, you know, you want it to come from an organic place, but you also do want to encourage it along sometimes, you know, because if we all waited for everything to come from an organic place, you know, you want to go, hey, maybe I don't feel comfortable going out to the march today, but let me go out anyway and see how it feels, right? So you could have your reading cast with the people who look like the people in the paintings, right? Um, and that's what it is right now. And... That's what you wrote. Yeah. And maybe look at the reading and then go, well, you know what? I'm being moved to reconsider what I wrote. Maybe, maybe you will, maybe not. 
that's okay. I, I, I think it's, I don't think that justice means that every kind of person is always included in every kind of thing. I don't think that's what kind of justice people are asking for. Do you see, you know what I mean? It's not like every play got to include somebody who looks like me. God damn it. You know, I don't think, I don't think that's what people are asking. I do think people are asking to be seen, not abused and certainly not harvested, not to have their cultural works harvested. So, I mean, I got to say in terms of, you know, I, I mean, just me personal, again, this is just my personal opinion. I have seen plays which are white characters, you know, a story that does not involve a person of color, okay, but then they keep making a reference to some kind of thing going on in the world, like, gee, that thing in Uganda or whatever, to kind of show that they're relevant. It's, you see see what I mean? And that seems abusive to me. Yeah. Personally, I find that abusive because they don't want it to be a white play. They want to show that they're woke so they kind of talk about or they have one black character in there to make it look relevant yo and that's personally yeah that's 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 tricky um but for example like uh, i don't know um richard nelson had a play on recently on on online but his his plays that i saw at the public theater i think it was last year white characters white plays that was a that was fine I wouldn't call it a white play. I call it some characters that he f- loves that he wanted to see. Just like I wouldn't call an August Wilson play a black play. You see what I'm saying? You see? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know? So yeah. I would go ahead and have your reading. Have your reading. The way that you imagined it, you know, and see in the reading of it if there is something else that you want to do differently next reading or not. Write a new play right? Yep. That maybe incorporates some of the things more specifically going on in the streets today. Um, We're all being moved to look at our actions, you know? Yes. We're all being moved to look at our actions. So I appreciate you looking at your, the actions of what you do. Thanks. Thank you. But thanks for showing up here. It's good always to see you, Devin. Thank you, Kevin. Um, all right, we got three minutes left, and we're going to go to Jody. Jody, are you there? Oh, yep, I'm here. Am I unmuted? Okay. Oh, hi, hi, Miss Parks. So, I have just like a quick question. Um, I feel weird calling you anything but Miss Parks. So, <laughs> I, I'm going to put on my. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Do it. Um, and my cat's like roaming around here. So if he knocks me in the head, sorry about that in advance. Um, I just have, I have a play that I've been struggling to com- not necessarily complete, but really kind of figure out the broader like story, broader narrative. And part of it is because it, the play itself kind of frightens me and I can't really figure out why I feel it's almost like I have the sense of dread to try and go back to finishing this story that I began and I was just wondering, have, have you ever had that experience where you started something and like felt afraid of it or intimidated by it? And, and if so, what did you do? Or like, I, I just, it's like I have some sort of block and I, I think it's very much fear-based and I can't quite figure out how to break through that. Yeah, well, there are a couple of things. Yeah, okay, so you could put it down and never write it on it again. That's a possibility. Right. You could totally, in your mind anyway, in your imagination, imagine the worst case scenario. What would really happen? You don't have to do it now, but what would really happen if you finish the play? What is it that you're afraid of? And take a good look at that, Mm -hmm. you know, which is sometimes helpful. Or you could not really focus on whatever it is you're afraid of too tough. And again, get out of timer, maybe set, you know, maybe 10 minutes a day small little increments 10 times six is 60 you know so right and you would you could accumulate an hour working on it every day just chip away just just, yeah just inch along inch along inch along okay Um, 
like that. And so you don't have to really um, sort of have a conversation with the thing you're afraid of, you know? Right, you know right, 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 right. Okay, you can have a conversation by inching along. Mm. And, you know, during the day, you're going to be sort of having these things roll around in your life and in your head. Right. But in the meantime, you get 10 minutes a day. Yeah. Which you do a little, uh, 10 minutes a, a session, which you do a little bit. And then the timer goes off. And okay. you do a little bit more. And the timer goes off, you know, I mean, space throughout the day. Right, right. You know? Okay. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good question. Thanks, Jody. It's six o'clock. Six o'clock. Magically. Magic. <laughs> it's become six o'clock again. I can't, Yay. Believe, I can't believe. Um. So, as usual, tomorrow is our final day of the week, Thursday, June 11th. Um, and if you sign up uh, by 3 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow on the Public Theater website, um, you can be in the Zoom and I'll send you the link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can always just watch us on HowRound.tv. We love it. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Everybody. Thanks. Have a good evening, everybody. See you tomorrow. <laughs>